This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research through funding by the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED UAS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsement. This is part two of chapter seven. In this video, we cover displaying rasters. We begin with a blank map, connect to our data folder, and add the Mid-Atlantic States feature class and a digital elevation model raster, or DEM, for the northern part of Virginia. Changing the symbology on a raster data set, such as a DEM, is accomplished in a similar manner to vector data. Select the layer's name in the contents window and a raster layer group appears with its own tabs. Remember the default symbology for most raster files is grayscale. Click on the Appearance tab and several options appear. We're only going to discuss symbology in this chapter. Many of these other options are related to enhancing the image on display and are discussed in later chapters of this book. Click the Symbology Triangle. The first option is Stretch. The Symbology dialog box opens. Point to the grayscale color scheme. The screen tip tells us this is a continuous color scheme. There are many options for color in the drop-down box. Pointing to each scheme provides a description. This particular raster is elevation data, so it's likely most appropriate to use an elevation color scheme. Choose elevation number one and give it some time. Rasters process a bit slower than vectors. In this symbology, higher elevations appear white, perhaps because highest elevations many times are snow covered. Lowest elevations are blue, many times areas of water. Now let's go back and choose a discrete symbology. In this symbology, the GIS automatically groups the raster values instead of stretching them over the range of values. Change the color scheme to elevation number one again if you need to. Though the color scheme is elevation number one, it is no longer stretched. Instead, each range of values is assigned a specific color. This scheme looks similar to stretched, but has distinct boundaries for each elevation range. Let's switch to classify. With this scheme, options are chosen by the user for symbolization. Some are discussed in more detail later. When this option is chosen, a message may appear asking about computing histograms. Just click yes. A histogram is a graph of the individual raster grid cell values and the number of grid cells that correspond to each specific value. And these must be computed before the options appear. The first option is the method of classification. The default is always natural breaks, Jenks. For the specifics on the method of classification, please see your text. We're going to leave the setting natural breaks. The second option is the number of classes. The default is five. Change this to eight. The next choice is color scheme. Change to elevation number one again. The results don't look much different from stretched, but look in the contents. The data has eight ranges of specific values. We no longer have one complete range, but values less than or equal to 359 and then values from between about 359 and about 756, etc. This is one major difference between the classify approach and the stretch approach. Using different classification techniques with the same data sets can produce vastly different looking maps. Be sure you understand what you're trying to communicate to the audience and integrate an appropriate classification accordingly. With these first seven chapters, we've demonstrated how to open ArcGIS Pro create a map project, open an existing map project, import a map, 
connect to external data, add data, and symbolize data. In Chapter 8, we'll discuss metadata in ArcGIS Pro.